he cannot hear, and he cannot speak, which means that his ability to communicate is severely hampered. And so they, presumably meaning some friends or family members, bring this man to Jesus to get him to lay his hands on him. Now Jesus, at this stage, is in pagan territory. He has had a bit of strife with the Pharisees, as we heard in last Sunday's Gospel, and so he leaves the area and goes into non-Jewish areas of the region. So presumably the deaf man and those who bring him to Jesus are all pagans. Last Sunday's Gospel had Jesus rebuking the Pharisees, those who outwardly seemed to be great upstanding men of faith, quoting to them the prophet Isaiah, This people honours me only with its lips, but their hearts are far from me. This week, we have people who, being pagan, do not honour the God of Israel with their lips. In their prayers, they worship false gods. But their hearts are somehow stirred by Christ's presence and by his words. And while the Pharisees and those under their influence close their ears to what Jesus has to say, the contrast is in this deaf man whose ears are opened by the Lord so that he can hear and accept the good news of the kingdom. And by the time Jesus moves on from this region, the pagans, we are told, are full of admiration for him and are honouring him with their lips truly, testifying to his power and his goodness. He has done all things well, they say. These pagans have come to faith. This gospel has a lesson for us. Maybe we have never had any difficulty with hearing or with speech. But as much as those things would severely diminish our interaction with and enjoyment of the world around us, there is a far more devastating deafness and muteness which can afflict us. And that is to be deaf to, cut off from the voice of the Lord, and consequently to have nothing to say about the ways in which the Lord has come to us, touched and changed us. God designed the human ear to be able to hear and the human tongue to be able to speak. But at a deeper and higher level, God has designed the human soul to be able to hear and communicate with him and to be filled with a desire to speak with him and then to speak of him to others. These spiritual abilities were somewhat disabled by the fact of original sin. And this miracle of Jesus in some way points out that he has come to restore communication and right relationship between us and God. Indeed, in the middle of the baptismal ritual, there is a section called the Ephatha prayer, where the ears and mouth of the newly baptized are touched and blessed with the words, The Lord Jesus made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. May he soon touch your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the glory of God the Father. This miracle that we hear in the Gospel, it's as though it is spiritually inserted into the baptismal ritual. By the grace of God, we are able to communicate freely with the Lord, and communication is key to the health and strength of any relationship. And communication leads to union. And good communication involves both speaking and listening in an appropriate proportion. However, even after the Lord has spiritually opened us up to be in communication and union with him, we can, and many unfortunately do, turn a deaf ear to him. Many rarely, if ever, hear the word of God, for they rarely come to Mass. And even when they do come, they don't necessarily lend their ear to what is being said to them, 
when the word of God is proclaimed. And many do not engage in prayer in their day-to-day lives either. And so, neither listening to God nor speaking to him, they are not likely to be able to speak of him to others, nor allow his word to shape the way they live their lives. In the letter to the Romans, St. Paul tells us that faith comes from hearing. If that's so, then is it any wonder if faith weakens and diminishes in us whenever we stop listening to God and his word? Listen to what God's word itself tells us about God's word in the 10th chapter of the letter to the Romans. It says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in him if they have not heard of him? And how can they hear without someone to proclaim him? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. Obviously, at Mass, we hear with our ears the gospel proclaimed but we are encouraged to listen to it with our hearts. We can all be afflicted by inattention at times when the word of God is proclaimed at Mass. I can sit in the presider's chair and the lector's voice, the reader's voice and words just float by over my head. I am hearing their voice, but perhaps I am not listening to his word. Might I suggest a little interior prayer that you and I might speak to the Lord whenever the word of God is proclaimed at Mass. Perhaps we could use the word spoken by the prophet Samuel in the temple when he begins to hear God's voice. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And might I suggest that in our own personal prayer lives too, we might use that invocation. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I know all too often I go to prayer and I say something like that, really, but not that. I say, listen, Lord, your servant is speaking. So perhaps also in our personal prayer life, we might give more space to silently being with the Lord perhaps reading through the Holy Scripture, allowing ourselves to hear what the Lord is saying to us, more listening than speaking. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening.